many programs and projects have been implemented to increase food production. Food is important to any living thing. It sustains life. Without food, there will be no source of energy and nutrients for growth and development. Where does food come from? The plants are our primary source of food. They manufactured food using the energy of the sun and raw material from the air and the soil. The plants produce substances that are sources of energy, proteins, and nutrients. The animals eat the plants in order to grow. We eat both plants and animals. Welcome to I Agree by Sir Dan. So our topic for today is about parts of a plant. So what is a plant? Definitely, a plant is a living organism of the kind exemplified by trees, shrubs, herbs, grasses, ferns, and mosses, typically growing in a permanent site absorbing water and inorganic substances through its roots and synthesizing nutrients in its leaves by photosynthesis using the green pigment chlorophyll. A plant has different parts and each part has its own functions. So parts of the plant is divided into two, parts found above the ground and parts found below the ground. For above the ground, we have stems, leaves, flowers, and fruits. For below the ground, we have roots. So let's talk about the first one, stem. The stem are important in carrying food and water. They have tube-like cells that carry food and water. These are the xylem and phloem cells that are continuously form the leaves through the stems to the roots. There are two types of stems, the woody stems and the herbaceous stem. The woody stem is hard, strong, and tough, while herbaceous stems, the stem tissues of plants are soft and easy to crush. Next part of the plant is a leaf. Another part of the plant, which is the leaf, which is the main food-making organ of the plant. The leaves are generally green in color due to a pigment called chlorophyll. The chlorophyll is important in the plant's production of food. The figure shows a cross-section of the leaf. It shows tiny openings in the leaf called stomata. These openings are important in conducting carbon dioxide gas needed for photosynthesis and in the release of oxygen, a byproduct of the same process. Next part of the plant is flower. So plant needs to reproduce their kind so they have a part designed for that function. They have flowers. Plants attract insect pollinators by their flowers. Some flowering plants have modified leaves that the insects are attracted. They are usually colored. The diagram showing the cross section of a perfect flower. A perfect flower contains both the male and the female reproductive parts. The stamen, anther, which and filament, while the pistil, stigma, style, and the ovary. Next is fruit. Fruit is actually the developed matured ovary. It contains the seed. Most fruits are fleshy and edible. The last part of the plant is what we call roots. So below the ground grow the roots. Different plants have different roots. A plant may either have a fibrous or a taproot system. 
When you say fibrous root system, this is composed of many fiber-like structures. The top root system has a main root from which other roots arise. A plant that has a top root develop a very deep root system. So plants are important because they supply food and oxygen. The plants are the only living things that can manufacture food from water and dissolve minerals from the soil and carbon dioxide from the air. There are different plants one can grow. Vegetables and field crops are easy to cultivate and market. Study shows that the consumption of vegetables and other crops is steadily increasing. Some crops provide food and are a good source of income. Some farm crops are valued for their medicinal uses too. Gardening is also a good hobby and a therapy for mentally disturbed people, old folks, and drug abusers. Now, we're going to tackle the growth pattern of plants. A mature plant is a product of a series of changes from a seed germination through growth of seedling to maturity. So when you say growth in plants, it refers to the changes in size and weight. The differentiation of plant parts into specialized organ is referred to as development. The yield of farm crop depends on the size and efficiency of the plant's photosynthetic system. Photosynthesis is the process by which green plants manufacture food from raw materials of the soil and air using solar energy. The plant drops and stores the energy of the sun and uses it in manufacturing carbohydrates from carbon dioxide and water. Carbohydrates are used by the plant to maintain its life processes. These processes include absorbing water and nutrients, transporting them, and converting the products of photosynthesis to cell parts. Photosynthesis starts as soon as the plant grows leaves. Without the leaves, which are the plant main organ of photosynthesis, the plant must be supplied with food. Most plants start out as seeds. The seeds contain the new plant called the embryo and its food reserve called the endosperm. These parts are protected by the seed coat. The seed starts to grow as soon as it comes in contact with water. The water absorbed by the seed coat starts the breakdown of reserve food, which is then used in respiration. Using the released energy from respiration, the cells divide and enlarge. The root breaks out of the seed coat and moves towards the soil. The young root absorb water and nutrients from the soil. The first shoot moves upward towards the light. The stored food is used up by the growing embryo till the leaves come out. The seed, by the time it produces its own food, is called seedling. The plant grows and develops under favorable conditions of temperature, moisture, and nutrients. Growth occurs in two phases, vegetative and reproductive. Vegetative growth means occurs as soon as the seed germinates up to the stage when it is ready to flower. The period from flowering to fruiting is what we call reproductive stage. The final stage of a plant's life is what we call senescence. This is the process of aging, which leads to the death of the whole plant or a plant part. Many field crops die after bearing seeds. They are referred to as annual crops. They complete their life cycle in one growing season. The cycle starts with a seed and ends with a seed. Some crops need two growing seasons to complete their life cycle. They are called biennial crops. Example of a biennial crops are carrot, cabbage, lettuce, turnip, and cauliflower, which belongs to this group. They grow vegetatively during the first season 
and bear fruit and die during the second season. Perennial crops grow from year to year. Example of this crop is asparagus and bamboo. Thank you. The learning is very important when it comes to agriculture. And I thank you.